If you are an investor from New York City who is sick and tired of the crazy landlord-tenant policies in New York, who is sick and tired of things like rent control, who is sick and tired of the over-inflated housing prices, if that's you and you want to make some money doing short-term rentals, you, sir or lady, are in the right place. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. My name is James Wise. If you want to invest in real estate, please stick around and subscribe. If you are an investor from New York who's pissed off, about landlord-tenant policies that are out of whack, high housing prices, uh, rent control, and the various other things that make investing in New York a problem. You definitely want to pay attention to today's show because that is the exact situation my man Way is in. Way, you've been working with me for quite some time. Where you and I are at, brother, we got one property under contract for you. Brand new construction uh, that's under contract. The builder is finishing up the renovation. We have your inspection scheduled. We're getting that underway. You also submitted an offer on a neighboring property. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the seller there. They shit the bed on that one. I know there are other offers on that one, and the seller just doesn't appear to want to move on that. Maybe they're having problems finishing up the house. I don't know. I don't have that info. But me and you, brother, we got to move on. We can't worry about that. We can't try to overpay to take down a deal. If the deal isn't there, if the numbers don't make sense, we move on. And I think you're going to like the property I have for you today, brother. This one is even cheaper right downtown, and we're going to have a really wide open open uh, tenant or guest space, so to speak, right? So without further ado, brother, let's get into exactly how to structure that deal right after this quick break. Hey, Steve, what are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back, folks. Let's get into the meat, right? Airbnb investing, it's cool, it's great, but how do we make it all work, right? How do we get the thing moving? How do we put the pieces together, right? Of course, my team will handle everything for you guys. Everything. Property management, maintenance, insurance, Tenant screening, tenant leasing, the whole shebang, right? Putting it on platforms, Airbnb, VRBO. Uh, there's platforms uh, that specifically target healthcare workers, right? Like we get a lot of people very interested uh, <clears throat> in, in short-term rentals because we have so many like medical facilities downtown, right? We get a lot of like contracted nurses, right? You get the traveling nurses and stuff, right? So when you guys hear me talk about short-term rentals, right, it doesn't always necessarily mean we're going to be running to people on vacation. That's not always the case. We might be doing like a three-week stay, a 45-day stay, a 60-day stay to like a traveling nurse, right? There's all types of things. And when you're right downtown like we are, all right, that is that's that is big, man. That's where they want to be, right? You got downtown Cleveland. You got Asia Town. We got all the stuff. And then right over here on this side, you got University Circle, Little Italy, right? So... This is like a very popping area right here. This is where stuff's happening. You get people that want to, you know, hit up all the, the cool nightlife bars, restaurants, right? University Circle, that's the big medical action, right? We're right over there. We're right next to everything. And, of course, you got more stuff, obviously, downtown Cleveland. You got everything, right? The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, uh, the Q, the Brown Stadium, you name it, we got it. So if people are on vacation, this is where they're coming. Oops, I'm, tr I'm trying to get you guys a street view here. If they're on vacation, they want to be close to downtown. If they're working in the medical industry, that's where they want to be as well, right? So you see we got big old buildings, and then here is our building. This is pretty cool. This is a townhome. Here, I'll just cruise you down the street a little bit more. You can see what's going on. You got some, like, big industrial thing here. 
And you just get some more skyscraper action over here because we are downtown, right? Now, this is cool. This is a townhome, right? But what's nice about this is there's no HOA, right? We are on the corner unit, right? So we cut the grass, you know, us, Holton Wise, we'll cut the grass for you. You don't have an HOA to worry about, which is good. Because when I do short-term rental investments for you guys, I, I try to avoid properties with HOAs, right? Because that's another added layer of scrutiny. It's another uh, hand in the cookie jar. And sometimes they uh, place regulations on you being uh, unable to do short-term rentals. Sometimes there's even HOAs that don't let you do regular rentals, right? So when I do the short-term rental stuff, guys, I like to focus on properties that don't have HOAs, right? The city of Cleveland, they've already gone through, legislated all their Airbnb stuff. They are cool with Airbnb. Uh, we're not going to have any issues with them. Uh, the property, quite nice, man, right? It's pretty nice. Now, this is a 2000 build, 2005, okay? So it's 16 years old, right? So there's no tax abatement. Uh, just so you guys are aware, right? In the city of Cleveland, uh, they want to get new development in there, right? They want to get new development in, in targeted neighborhoods, right? So we're seeing a lot of, you know, newer development, right? So right now, today, if you want, you could buy a property in Cleveland that's a brand new build. You get a tax abatement, but you ain't going to get it for this price, right? You're going to have to pay uh, quite a hefty sum. Uh, but we do get lucky, and in the hotter neighborhoods, the more trendy neighborhoods, uh, neighborhoods where the action is, sometimes we can pick up properties like this that are pretty damn close to new for a good price. Like this one, 2005, right? So the builder, when they bought it, you know, they took advantage of that tax credit, right? Because what we don't want to deal with when we're doing these short-term rentals is like 100-year-old properties, right? We want some newer construction, right? And that's exactly what we get here. Now, as you can see, it's pretty nice, but we should spruce it up a little bit, right? I'm just putting... A budget on this, 15 G's, right? 15 G's to probably repaint, freshen it up, right? Like, I think it's about 15 years old, some of the carpet in here. So we want to spruce it up, but we don't really need to do much. Here's your parking uh, for your guests, right? All in all, very solid, just 15 G's, and then we'll put in 25 G's, right? $25,000 to furnish it, right? So as far as the price goes to buy it, they're asking 188. It was under contract. It fell out of contract. To my understanding, it, it seems like the buyer uh, didn't get their financing. So what I would like to do is we'll come in kind of aggressive, right? I'd like to try to pick it up at 160. Now, that's where we're going to start. Do I 100% think we're going to lock it down for 160? Not sure. But I think that's a relatively decent starting point. If the seller box at that, uh, you know, it would make sense to go up another 10K or so. But I would like to start there because they just fell out of contract. They've been on the market for quite some time. So I'd really like to try to get aggressive, see if we can't get you the best deal. If we could pick it up at 160 with the 15K in reno, 25K in furnishings, that should be a $200,000 investment. Now, it's a three-bed, four-bath, so we're going to sleep a ton of folks. Uh, but it's not like a super huge luxury single family home. So there are going to be properties that we can get higher nightly rents, right? Um, this is something that I think we're going to do more of like the 30 day and 60 day rentals to like healthcare workers and stuff. So our average nightly rent is going to go down. Uh, so all told, I factored out roughly $8,500 in monthly income, right, is what our gross could be. But after you factor in our expenses, including a vacancy expense, right? Now, when we're doing like uh, longer rentals, like 30 and 60 day rentals, of course, we're going to have lower vacancy during that time. But our daily rent, average daily rent is going to go down. When people are only renting it for one or two days, it will remain higher. So what I did is I put together this chart over the whole shebang, right? Over the whole year, this is what I believe the average should be. I believe you will average a total profit of approximately 25 because in the area we're seeing an average over the whole year of 38 percent vacancy right so we have to factor that in as well obviously our vacancy will be greatly reduced if we get the 30 and 60 day medical rentals uh, which is what we definitely want to target since we're so close to downtown uh, but as far as like vacationers when we get the higher premiums but shorter stays they're coming mostly in the summer months so you know, there's going to be fluctuations with how we bring in the money. So you just got to look at what I believe we'll do, right? So I believe we should profit for you approximately 25 for the month, 30 Gs for the year. And if you break it down with your financing, this is where it gets even juicier, man. You got 
the 30 G's you're bringing in, you're going to need to bring in, of course, your down payment plus the costs, right? So you should have uh, 65,000 into the deal. Although actually, it looks like I got an error because that 65, that would be 40,000 for your down payment, 25,000 for those furnishings. But I forgot in this chart to include that extra 15 G's, right? So you actually uh, ignore that 65 in the chart. You're going to have $80,000 into the deal, right? So on there, it's showing a cash on cash return of 37%. But that is actually going to be a little high. Uh, it should be, that should be divided by 80,000. That's going to be 30%, right? So we're looking at a cash on cash return of 30%. And all you need is $80,000 into this deal, folks. And like I said, it's a newer build, right? We got a 2005 build. So you know what you don't have to deal with? You don't have to deal with any of the new Cleveland lead-based paint regulations that are upsetting quite a bit of investors, right? Because those only apply to properties built before 1978 in the city of Cleveland. This one, 2005, absolutely no worry for lead-based paint. So this, solid deal. Let's take it down. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.